trip behind the scenes with future country rock blues kings and queens discover them first with palm mash tv palm mash tv Hello there, it's Palm Mash TV time again. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a great interview coming up in just a couple moments. But before we get into that, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell. And every time there's a new interview headed your way, you'll be notified. You can check that out and leave a comment on the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to hear from you on Facebook as well. It's facebook.com forward slash Palm Mash TV. And feel free to like the page, inbox us, comment on the things you see there. And uh, you can email us at palmashtv, all one word, at gmail.com. And if you're a band or solo artist that want to be on the show, you can use that. Or if you're simply a fan, you can use that same email address. We'd love to hear from you. And all this will be re recapped at the closing credits at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. From Tequilma, Oregon, we have Justin Sane Native. He's a very awesome artist, and I think you're going to agree. And we'll get to that in a second, but here's a quick word from Smile World TV. So don't go away. We'll be right back. types of shows we're seeking. Let us help you share your creativity. For more information, email us at smilepublishing007 at gmail.com or you can visit our website swtvgetyourchannel.now.site. All right, everybody, interview time again. And with us from Tequilma, Oregon, we have uh, Justin Sane Native. Thanks for joining us, Justin Sane Native. Hey, thank you for having me, Paul Mash TV. Uh, good to be here. Good to be here. Uh, yeah, well, we're, like we're glad to have you. Chris here. Okay, well, thank we're you. glad glad to meet both of you. Uh, uh, tell you. us a little. Tell us a little bit about how it all began for you. I mean, as you know, all artists uh, start out differently. Uh, tell us your story about how you got started. Well, you know, I've, I've honestly, I've been a an, an entertainer and a, a vocalist, singer, if you will. Uh, performer um as long as i can remember my you know i was i'm doing talent shows and and singing a uh, kiss's song beth uh in the talent show as early as the third grade and and so i i i, I had a real uh, early affinity towards uh singing um I, it brought me great joy and comfort uh so i was always part of the the choirs in school and the and the chorus and and i was part of the all-state choir and i traveled around with choirs and that kind of graduated to with the kind of music that I enjoyed that kind of incorporated into me, you know, uh, in the late teens, early twenties, kind of dabbling around with, uh, you know, the, the local heavy metal bands and things like that, doing a little bit of singing. Um, unfortunately at a, at a, you know, about that age, um, as a lot of, a lot of people do, unfortunately, is I, I kind of went down the path of, of alcohol and drugs. And so that kind of that kind of took over my life in a big way for for many years um, uh, to basically to the point that I didn't you know, I was probably going to be dead or in prison if I didn't quit drinking and drugging. And so in 2006, 2006 um, through much, uh, much prayer and through much uh, um, ceremony and things like that from people that loved me and and, uh, you know, I started getting back into my my Native American roots and traditions and culture a little bit and wanting to learn more about that. Um, and I did that for about a year, um, learning about my culture, my language. And in this year, I still wasn't ready to quit drinking. And, uh, you know, and it was at that time that, that uh, you know, like kind of how you read in Native American storybooks about how, how the Natives would go on vision quests and have a, have a great vision from the, and from, from the creator. And on November 6th of 2008, um that's kind of what happened i had a great vision and and a creator came and spoke to me and spirits came and spoke to me and and gave me a path in life and it was at that time that i woke up and and november after on november 96 and i never touched alcohol again and i never touched man-made drugs of any kind again 
And I started on my path of what we Native Americans call the Red Road, um, which is the path of spirituality, um, honor, traditionalism, uh, respect, you know, and, you know, respect for our Mother Earth, respect for women and children, each other, um, respect for ourselves, um, and following a, a life of honor. And, and so from that point on, my life became about spreading a message. Um, a message of togetherness and oneness um, amongst amongst the human race and uh, respecting our, our planet and and all life, basically. Uh, so this kind of turned into me doing a, a, what we do, what we call Native American. We we have powwows and I was a dancer at the powwows um, uh, in full Native American traditional dress. I was a traditional dancer. Um, I do dance for the people. It's a medicine dance and a ceremonial dance. And uh, so that kind of turned into, I, I kind of incorporated that into, at the time, I was really into a, a record label called Strange Music, which is the number one independent hip hop label in the world. Um, and it's ran by te- a, a gentleman by the name of Tech Nine. Um, now, at this time that I was on my, on my, what I call a medicine journey, I was traveling around the country and I was uh, praying at certain spots. This was the time of the... Uh, the, the, the oil spill in the Gulf and things like that. So I was, I was going to certain places and I was praying and doing ceremony. Um, I went back to my reservation and things of that nature. And in between, I was going to concerts, <laughs> um, you know, for my own medicine and things. And um, so I was seeing a lot of Tech Nine and, and he had a gentleman that was touring with him around this time. And he goes by the name of Prozac. Uh, his name is Steve Shippey. And he's uh, he does uh, now he does paranormal documentary movies and, and television shows. He's actually on on the Travel Channel, um, does paranormal documentaries. And <clears throat> excuse me, um, we ended up talking outside of one of the events, you know, just kind of about our lives and our paths and things like that. And we ended up really clicking um, and bonding. Uh, I ended up investing into one of his first films. He does paranormal documentary movies. Uh, that he would premiere in Saginaw, Michigan once a year for Halloween. Um, and I, I am the executive producer of one of these films. It's called The Haunting on Hamilton Street. And um, I invested into this film from just a business standpoint, you know, because I had I had been, uh, you know, in that party phase of my life for so long, I never really did all those things that adults are supposed to do. Have a business, you know, uh, a car, license, you know, all those things that adult you know, uh, adult, you know, people are supposed to have in their life. I haven't accomplished those yet. So this was a time in my life when I was trying to build up and start my own business and get regrounded. You know, um, I had found myself spiritually and now I needed to reground out and find myself um, in a good earthly plane. And what I was going to do here. So I started getting my stuff together. I, I was invited to Saginaw, Michigan, uh, to check out some of the filming for the for the ghost hunters. That's basically what it is. It's a uh, they're hunting ghosts and trying to get footage on film and and you know audio of of you know maybe they can hear some ghosts and things. Um, I was invited to the filming, and um, I, I had told Prozac at this time. I said, you know, I don't know if you know what to do in my real life or not, but people actually bring me tobacco and gifts to go to their homes and make scary ghosts go away. So if you bring me out there, I don't know how much you're going to get on film, you know, and he says, well, you know, is that right? Maybe, maybe we can bring you out as a cleanser, you know, or something like that at the end. Um, so to make a longer story short, uh, shorter, I ended up going to, uh, to Saginaw, Michigan, and I took what little bit of medicine I could with me, some eagle feathers and uh, some sage and some, you know, some cedar and, and sweet grass, things like that. Um, and when I got there, come to find out that uh, where we were filming in Saginaw, Michigan, the entire town of Saginaw is built on top of uh, my tribe's burial grounds, the Chippewa people's burial grounds, the Saginaw Chippewa. I'm White Earth Chippewa, um, Ojibwe is what we like to say, but uh, uh, but this was Saginaw Chippewa. And so there was a lot of, a lot of unrest there. And uh, um, it come to find out that I really actually wasn't there for the movie at all. I mean, I was, but... In the bigger picture, I was there to do the work that I do on my spiritual path. And so I started doing ceremony and and Prozac would would film the ceremony, what I would allow him to film, because a lot of Native American ceremony is, of course, uh, taboo, if you will, uh, for the for the seeing public to uh, to witness. Uh, so I was there. I was I was singing my native drum songs um, on, on the in the film. 
And Prozac says, boy, you, you know, you got a heck of a voice. I'd sure love to get you in a studio. And uh, I was like, well, that sounds wonderful. That's something I've wanted to do all my life. Now, granted, you have to understand that, that I've only had two dreams my whole life. And that was rock star or movie star. And I had felt that I drank those dreams away a long time ago. You know, I felt that I, I was past that time that I had drank and drugged all my dreams away. Um, you know, since the sobriety came, the doors started opening and those dreams started materializing right, right into my life. And so next thing you know, there I am in a, in a, you know, a major studio in, in Detroit, Michigan, uh, with psychopathic records, uh, studios. And I'm, I'm, I'm on radio shows. I'm, I'm singing a, a, a hook, uh, is what we say in rap. It'd be a chorus in rock. Um, but I'm singing a hook for, who's that? Signed to the number one independent hip, hip, hip hop label in the world. Um, that kind of got me the ball rolling. I took, I brought it back home here to Tequilma, Oregon, and uh, started, you know, showing my friends. Look, I sang a, I sang a hook for Prozac from Strange Music, and I was so excited. And uh, but it was very, very unclimatic because it was 16 bars of just music, and then my little 10 seconds of singing, and then it was done. So I said, you know what, I, I'm gonna, I, you know, I've been listening to rap for a while, and I'm a musician, I'm a, I'm a singer, I, I'm gonna try to write a rap to this here, uh, to this beat, and just so that way I could rap it to my friends while they're waiting for my hook. So I wrote a little rap, and I thought it sounded good. I called up Prozac, I rapped it to him over the phone, and he said, hey man, you got something there, that sounds great. Um, I'm gonna hook you up with a DJ, uh, that, uh, with a producer and DJ that happens to be in your area in Portland, Oregon. Um, DJ just happened to be now a year before this. I was literally in the audience screaming, DJ Chill, DJ Chill from the front row. This is Tech Nine's DJ. This is where Prozac has sent me to, to DJ Chill's home. So next thing you know, I'm at the home of a of a major DJ and record producer, and I'm I'm recording my I had five little songs that I had. Um, and I was just kind of doing it for myself. Um, uh, Cuckoo's Nest was one of those songs. And I was just kind of doing it for something to do, just to kind of live out a dream, go, you know, and record. And and uh, DJ Chill heard what I was doing, and he actually called me the Kurt Cobain of rap, um, and had said that he would love to make me some instrumentals. Uh, so he ended up making me the other five instrumentals for my first album, and, and so Just Insane Native was born. I I was gonna go by Just Insane because that's been a long time nickname since I, since uh, uh, my teens, and. I kind of looked online and saw that there was a lot of other just insanes. So I ended up adding the native to it, which is if anybody's confused out there, the N8V at the end of just insane does, does spell out native. Um, so uh, that's kind of where it was born. I put out my first album. I, I, I released it just as if I had been doing this my whole life and put it on all the platforms that I could. And it actually got some positive feedback. And from then on, it's just been, uh, continually um, doing shows, rocking stages, uh, performing for the people. And for me, it still is all exactly where it started in the very beginning, um, uh, Paul, and that's by, by spreading a message. All this came from wanting to spread a message. And I, at first I did it through ceremony and my dance, and now I do it through my music. Um, my songs that I write are about spreading a message. Uh, they are about, po they're, they're all positive. Um, rap, I call my music rap and roll, um, because it's kind of a mix between rap. I'm an old school metalhead, you know, so so I, I uh, old school rock and roller. But then rap, as you hear, kind of opened the door for me, you know. So next thing you know, I'm doing rap, but I got metal, I got metal roots, and I'm a Native American. So I mix those three things together. I call it rap and roll, and it's a it's a really good positive music. And uh, I just been out there spreading the message across the country on numerous tours. Uh, for the last, I guess, it's 2012, so I guess the last nine now. Hmm. Okay, well, that's quite a story, Justin. Um, and, of course, you know, your music is very good, and uh, I heard the song myself, which we'll be uh, looking into in a few minutes here. Uh, but uh, tell me a little bit about some of the influences in uh, rock and other, you know, uh, genres of music that you grew up with. Uh, what are some of them? Yeah. Well, you know, um, I like most... <laughs> People of my of my generation grew up with my mom, you know, listening to her songs. So when you know when I was a little kid, my mom was cleaning the house and had her oldies playing, and you know, and my dad had his forty fives that I would sneak out and listen to, you know. So I was listening to the coasters and and uh, 
you know, Chuck Berry and, and Motown and, and the Beach Boys and everything like that at a really young age, you know, uh, the Temptations, uh, you know, so I was kind of started out there and then that kind of moved to um, more of a, the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and the Doors and uh, that kind of, as I aged, uh, that kind of progressed into more of a Black Sabbath, uh, Ronnie James Dio, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, uh, and then that kind of graduated into more of a Venom, Slayer, Exodus, uh, Testament, uh, things of that nature, and everything in between. So, um, and then in between all that also, I was also, um, you know, I was, I'm also of the generation where hip-hop was born. So I was... I was one of those kids that was carrying around a big cardboard box to break dance on um, in 1989, you know, in, in the late 80s, you know, so I also had that hip hop influence uh, from a very young age. Uh, so, yeah, but, I, you know, I'd have to say that probably, you know, my biggest influence in, in all music would, of course, be some members from my family who had always sang around me, my mother, my uncle, um, but in the uh, Ronnie James Dio, you know, he's, he's like, a, you know, I don't throw around the word idol really too. If I had one, um, it would be Ronnie James Dio. He's, he's the ultimate performer to me and um, vocalist and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I grew up on all that good stuff, you know, Kiss and, and uh, for everything from Donna Summer to Kiss to, to Led Zeppelin, you know, so and everything in between. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a vocalist, so there was, there was not much when it came to good vocals that I didn't like. Um, I loved musicals, um, movies, Grease, uh, Saturday Night Fever, the Bee Gees were incredible to, incredible to me, you know, uh, uh, things like that. Uh, um, you know, I, I loved going to musicals as a child. My grandma would tell me to go to uh, things such as Ain't Misbehaving, Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, so so my musical, my musical uh, taste, you know, vary because I'm just such a, I'm more of a, a of a lover of, a, of of good music, good vocals, good. Uh, you know, I love I love classical too. I love Bach and and uh, you know, um, you know Mozart and things like that too. So I'm kind of all over the place. But you know, I like to consider myself an old school metalhead. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of those bands, even the stuff that you were talking about when you grew up with, I mean, a lot of those are are, are legends, or at least almost uh, legends in, in a in a, a technical sense. So I can see where you got a lot of your sound from. Um, uh, right now, somebody might be watching this and they might want to get more stuff from you. How would we do that? Is it all streaming platforms? Uh, I don't think you have any physical copies, yes, like CDs yes. or anything. Um, I, am you can... I do. I do have both. I do have physical copies of CDs, which, uh, which can be um, purchased for me directly at my email, which would be Just Insane Native. And I'm going to spell this out for everybody one time, and it's J U S T I N. S A Y N E space N V, and that's just insane native. Now, if you Google just insane native, um, you get pages of every platform that you could possibly think of that I'm on. Um, and if you any platform you're on, if you put in just insane native, I'm on there. Um, YouTube, um, you name it, just insane natives on your platform, Apple Music, Google Music. Um, you know, iTunes, uh, Pandora, all, all of it. Um, so I can be found. But if you want to mail me directly for CDs, I also do have copies of the movie Haunting on Hamilton Street 2. Um, and, and I can be uh, emailed at justinsanenative at protonmail.com. And, uh, and for everything else, like I said, if you're on a platform and there's music coming through that platform, just insane native's music is on there. Okay. Well, I hope everybody goes down to those streaming platforms and inquire about that those CDs. And I know you wouldn't be, uh, you know, you won't you won't be surprised because it's really good and um, and uh, you'll make a guy here happy. That's <laughs> that's uh that's a good thing. Oh, definitely. Um, and yeah, now, uh, an artist, bit, you know, that's 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 the bread and butter. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just a little bit, you know, while you were talking, you were mentioning the video called uh, Cuckoo's Nest. And which is where we're going to be showing you in a minute. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the story behind that and uh, about the video and so forth? Yeah, of course. Um, this is uh, the, you know, the first major video that I shot. And I, I always like to introduce new fans to Justin Say Native through this video. Um, it's kind of a, uh, you know, about, you know, like a four minute uh, little autobiography of my life. It kind of goes through 
you know, you know, growing up and, and kind of being in a dysfunctional situation and, and kind of that turning into um, alcoholism and, and, you know, problems with the law and, and things of that nature. And, and then kind of, you know, in the last verse, which I like to do in most of my songs is, you know, they tell me there's a beginning, a middle and end. And the beginning is, uh, you know, it, where it starts, of course. And at the end, I always like the story of, of, you know, kind of like a rising from the Phoenix out of the ashes, you know, about this is where I'm at now. That was the beginning. That may have been where I am, but with hard work and with per perseverance and with, you know, keeping your dreams and hope alive, this is where it can be at the end. And so that's kind of what the song is. It's just a little life story of, of my trials and tribulations and how I came out of it uh, a stronger, better man for them. Okay. Well, as I said, it is a real great song and I know everybody's dying to get into it. We'll get to that in just a second, but uh, uh, just to say, Native, thank you so much for being on the show today. We I, I enjoy talking to you and we would love to have you back sometime if you ever like to come back and plug something new for us. Yeah, well, definitely. And I do believe, uh, I do believe if, uh, you might have it. If you get a chance, uh, go ahead and listen to, you know, me and my brother Chris here, we just released our brand new single entitled uh, Head in the Sand. Uh, we don't have a video for it yet because it was actually just released on September 24th. Um, so it's it's relatively brand new. It's called Head in the Sand. And it really delves, uh, uh, you know, more into the, you know, Cuckoo's Nest is, a, is kind of my rap side. You can still hear the rock influences, but Head in the Sand is kind of a full band, full guitar, um, you know, good straight, you know, rock metal song. So that's brand new. So if everybody gets a chance, I'd love it if you check that out. And I uh, just want to say much love to everybody. My guitarist, Chris, would also like to thank and send out his love. And, uh, you know, just keep rocking with us. Look for my name on flyers. We're always touring around out there. We'd love to see you all. And we definitely appreciate uh, Paul Mash TV for giving us a platform to uh, get, get this message out there to the people. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you made my day there, Justin. So, um, so anyway, we're going to go right to the video here. Here's uh, Cuckoo's Nest right here on Paul Mash TV. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Tearing on through, these feelings grew, this can't be true, my memories of you are few, but I've got a new view, the cuckoo's nest, I flew. Here's a little story about a man that had no face, started out a happy boy, his mama saving grace, mama loved him very much and told him he'd be great, was attached to her leg, but booze had claimed her fate, so the boy decided to attach himself to hate, give us all the anger, all creation was to blame, teachers can't control him, gonna set him to a shrink, and he has his migraine headaches makes it hard for him to think Sadly another reason for his pops to drink Maybe kick his ass for being a lying little thief All the stupid kids at school they like to call him chief He doesn't fit in nowhere, should be dead, that's his belief Girls don't ever look at him, he seems a little weird But that's okay with him because he's now discovered beer Isn't really liking what he's seeing in the mirror And he's turning into everything that all the mothers fear Tearing on through These feelings grew This can't be true My memories of you are few But I've got a new view The cuckoo's nest I flew Growing and his fear is showing Must drink every little bit of booze that's flowing Two personalities to escape his reality This is what it's like inside the brain of insanity Now he doesn't give a fuck about the people that he hurts And he doesn't give a shit about the blood that's on his shirt Will he ever be the same? Everybody's feels pain Insane migraine Obsessed, obsessed, regress, undress Detest, unblessed, memories repressed Brain cells, so stress. I guess he guessed It's life one test One more beer fest More drugs to ingest Then one night in a fight over some yay He took a knife five times for no pay Punctured lung and cut aorta Does he remember? Kinda, sorta Tearing on through These feelings grew This can't be true My memories of you are few But I've got a new view The cuckoo's nest I flew now he wants to change things, feel what love brings Hear the birds sing, have some feelings He wants to feel the sunshine, wake up and feel fine Leave all those bad memories behind he Wants to sing, he needs to dance He sees it now, this is his chance Yearns to just be free, not lonely And if only this dream could be Time to begin, let the light in It's 
within him Stop the sinning, why is he grinning? He has great heart in his backyard body So star saved just a shard of his broke heart And he will start a place what fell apart Peace without this, won't be so pissed Now live in bliss, old life not missed Carry on through, these feelings through This can't be true, my memories of you are few But I've got a new view, the 